series. Today I want to talk to you about iSCSI. iSCSI is a way to connect to devices that normally would use fiber channel but without the expense of fiber channel infrastructure. iSCSI uses CAT5. So the great thing about iSCSI is there are no distance limitations. With fiber channel there's a distance that the cables can be. Your servers need to be a certain distance away from your storage devices. With iSCSI your storage devices can be in another country, for instance, if you wanted to have a remote backup uh, of your data. Uh, it can all be done with iSCSI. That's probably why one of the most important reasons for using NetApp is the iSCSI capabilities. So let's take a look at how we configure iSCSI and utilize it for, let's say, a Windows Server machine. Now, Windows Server 2008 has an iSCSI initiator built in. But previous versions of the operating system require an iSCSI initiator. Simply go to Microsoft.com or Google iSCSI initiator and you should come to this page. I'll provide this link in the comment section. So get the iSCSI initiator downloaded onto the machine that you want to connect to iSCSI. Be sure to download the appropriate iSCSI initiator for your platform. If you're on a 64-bit operating system, for instance, you need the 64-bit version. If you're on a uh, x 32-bit, uh, you want to get the x86 version. Installing the initiator on the target machine is pretty simple. Just double-click on the setup file and click Next. More than likely, you're going to accept all the defaults. So accept the licensing agreement and the SCSI initiator is going to be installed on this Windows 2003 standard edition server. Uh, what the initiator does is it allows communication between the host machine and your NetApp or your storage, your iSCSI storage. And now we're finished with the installation of the iSCSI uh, initiator. Now, of course, we've got to go to your NetApp device and activate iSCSI. Right here under Looms, the first tab, Enable, Disable. This is where you check the Enable button and click Apply, and that will enable or activate iSCSI. With the iSCSI service running, I know that I will be able to connect to this NetApp device from my Windows 2003 server, which has the iSCSI initiator installed if I give it the proper information. So let's go back to our Windows machine. I'm gonna launch the iSCSI initiator and turn on Discovery. Click on Add. And let's see what happens. So, okay, so it found my, uh, found my target device. And we have uh, a connection here. Now I can log on to this connection. Okay, and now I'm connected. Okay, now for the most important part. I'm back on the Net, net app. What I need to do is create a volume. Just go add, next, flexible, volume one's fine. Uh, uh, connect to aggregate one. And make it 100 megabytes. And 20% reserved for snapshot. Next, commit. Okay. Now I have a volume, volume, uh, refresh, volume one. Okay, I've got a volume. Uh, SCSI, iSCSI is enabled. Now under Lunds, uh, manage Lunds. I need to add a new Lun. And I'll call it Lun1. The Lun protocol to use is going to be Windows, because I'm connected to a Windows from a Windows machine. Uh, the size is going to be 75 megabytes because I have 100 uh, meg reserved but 20% reserved for snapshotting so and maybe let's give, give or take uh, 5 meg for some other purposes. Uh, I'll reserve 75 megs of the 100 for this loan. 
Um, I'm not going to actually reserve the space and click add. Now I've added a loon. Okay, now we got to go to initiator groups and manage. And I'm going to add an initiator group. Now the group I'm going to add is this second one here, which is the Windows 2003 server. I'll give it a name. Windows 2003 is fine. The type is iSCSI initiator. Operating system is Windows. Click on that and click Add. Okay, now I've got a iSCSI initiator group uh, created. Now there's one more thing I've got to do. Lunds manage. Oh, notice this LUN that I've created. There's no maps. I need to map the iSCSI initiator to this LUN. So click on No Maps. Add groups to map. And I'll add this Windows 2003 group that I just created to this loom. Give it a number. It's my first one, so I'll call it 1. And apply. Now, I should be finished with this portion on the NetApp. Back to our Windows machine. And if I go to Bound Volumes, Devices, click Bind All, and it doesn't find it. And that's, that's what we expect. What's wrong, what's happened here is I need to disconnect and reconnect. So I'll go into details, click on target, click on details, select the target session, and log off. Now that I've logged off, I'll log on. And I'll select the automatic restore this time and click OK. Now I'm connected. Now if I go to bound volume devices, bind all. Now it found my device. This is the Loon on the NetApp. Okay, uh, I'll, actually all I had to do was click bind all. And now you can see a persistent target is been established, has been established. Okay, so I should see this device here, right? But it's not there yet. But I need to go to my computer, right click on it, go to manage. Disk management. And let me just cancel this for now. And you'll see this new disk that I just created um, right here. I need to right click on the uh, uh, the warning sign and initialize the disk. Disk 1, click OK. And now I can right click on this partition, select new partition, and run this partition wizard. Make it a primary, primary partition, uh, the, the amount of space, uh, find, yeah, assign drive letter, um, format it, finish. And there we go. It's formatted and it should be available now to me. And there it is. New volume E is now available. So in these simple steps, we're able to use an iSCSI initiator on a Windows 2003 server or any server that you need to connect to your NetApp and create an iSCSI share. I hope this video has been helpful to you, and from all of us here at Altercom and N90X, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you right back here on this channel for the next video.